Hey guys, Connor here from CameraStore.com, and today we're going to be talking about the Nikon F3. This is an electronically controlled professional SLR released in 1980. It's the third in the main F line of cameras, and it's the first of those cameras to be electronically controlled. So the first two were uh, fully mechanical, no battery required, and this one broke the trend a little bit. So it was a little bit of controversy when it released, but it was quickly adopted by professionals and became one of the best-selling and best-regarded professional cameras of all time. So today we're going to cover some basic features and functions of this camera. Let's start by installing the lens. Today we have a Noct Nikkor 85 f1.2, so big front element there. Beautiful portrait lens. So just take that. We're going to line up this dot here on the bottom of the lens, or right above the aperture ring here, with this dot on the body, and that clicks into place and you see the aperture open up there. That means your lens is installed, ready to use. The next thing we'll do is install the battery. So the Nikon F3 takes LR44 batteries, these small button types, and we're just going to unscrew right here with a coin. Spin, 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 and that will come out. And there you go. See there's a little thing. Take that. And that. With the positive side facing into the camera. Put that in there. Oh. <laughs> My battery's twisted around here. Put that into the camera and then screw that back on. And then we're ready to work. So the F3 is fully battery dependent. As I said, there is one mechanical shutter speed but that's, um, we'll get to that later. <laughs> so let's start with the top of the camera where most of the interesting things are. So we have an accessory shoe here. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the Nikon F3 and other professional Fs don't have traditional hot shoes. They have accessories that slide on right here, and then you're able to attach a flash. Uh, we also have ISO here. If we look at the back of the camera, to change that, you just lift this black ring and twist it like that. And the number will change, and you just match that with what film you're using to get proper exposure. Moving on, we have exposure compensation here. So you can very subtly change the exposure that the camera will give you by pressing this silver button here, and then just twisting that. So you see you get two stops over and two stops under of exposure comp. Moving in, we have the uh, prism here, and that's interchangeable and has a little bit of a, of a lock here. You can see that slides in place to block the viewfinder. And moving a little bit further, we have the shutter speed dial. Shutter speeds go from 1 2,000th all the way down to 8 seconds plus B, T, a flash sync, and then an A mode and the shutter locks in A mode there, so to release it, press this silver button, and then you can rotate freely. Now moving on, we have the on-off switch here. So that's on when the red dot is visible, and off when it isn't. So we also have a multiple exposure lever, lever here. When this is down, the camera will pull the film with every pull of this lever. And when it's up, I'll hold it up. It's a little hard to hear the difference, but the camera is just activating the shutter instead of pulling the film. So if you want to do double exposures, uh, it's very easy to do with this camera, just with this lever here. And we have a frame counter here to tell us where we are in the roll. Just to come back a little bit, this lever here that you can activate by rotating here, if this red dot is out, that's the self-timer. So the camera will activate a 10-second self-timer when that red dot is visible. So that just about covers the top of the camera. Let's go over to the front here. So uh, starting here, we have a PC sync port just for flash connection. We have the 
lens release button sort of hidden underneath this big lens we have. We have the um, depth of field preview here, so you can see the lens. Oh, there you go. You can see the lens stops down when we press this silver button here. And once we have that pressed down, we can also click this lever in, and that's our mirror lockup button. So you can see the mirror is locked up and comes back down when we release that. Put the lens back on. So yeah, some very useful tools, especially for long exposures to lock up that mirror. And here we actually have the mechanical shutter release. So if the camera doesn't have batteries in it, this button won't work. The only way to be sure that the shutter will fire is to take this lever and click that down. And that clicks back up in there. So then we also have an auto exposure lock button right here on the inside of that switch. So, and right there, this light is the self timer. So if you activate the self timer with the switch up here, you'll see the light right there. Now onto the bottom of the camera, we have a uh, rewind button here that you press to release tension inside the camera. We have the tripod socket. We have the battery compartment that we used earlier. And then we have uh, this that we also unscrew with a coin to attach a motor drive. So that is how the motor drive pulls the film across the camera. So just to talk about the interchangeable prisms of the F3, um, one benefit of a professional system like this is that it is modular. So with the, F with the F3, we just take these two tabs here on either side of the prism, we push them back and then the prism comes right out. And as you can see, we have an HP prism here, and people will call this an F3 HP, but in reality, the body itself is exactly the same as any other F3. The HP only comes from using this particular prism. So, and an HP prism can be used on any F3 body. So then to reattach, actually before I do that, we can show. This is the meter readout here. So there's an LCD that you see uh, when you're using the camera. Um, and this redirects through the prism, and, but that's the LCD right there. And then you can see the focusing screen as well with the split prism and the micro prisms. These uh, focusing screens are interchangeable as well. Uh, I don't have one to show you, and it's a little bit more of a process than the prisms to take out, so we'll just do that. To reattach the prism, we just click it into place. It's a much see much easier operation with the F3 than it was with the F or F2. Super easy to swap those in and out. And the advanced mechanism of the F3 is widely regarded as one of the smoothest of any 35 millimeter camera. Super smooth. So talking about the lens here, we have a focus ring out the front that goes all the way down to 0.5 meters, and it's got the numeric scale in feet and meters, like most lenses. And then just a bit further in, we have the aperture ring, going from that 1.2 fast aperture to 16. And the way that the lens communicates this to the body is with this ridge here. This is the AI ridge. And the edge of that connects with this tab on the camera, and you can see that moving. That's the AI tab. So the Nikon F3 will only meter properly with lenses that have this tab. Um, if your lens doesn't have this tab, what you want to do is press here, and then flick that up. Uh, otherwise, you risk getting a lens stuck on the camera, which is super easy to do if you don't know what you're looking for. So and then you can just flick that right back into place, and you're ready to meter. OK, and now we're going to load the F3 up with this roll of Tmax 100. So make sure that I set the ISO properly to 100, just like that. And then, just like we said before, to open the back, we take this tab, push it to the right, pull that out, back pops open. Here's our roll. Slides right in there, pull it across. And there are small indents here. I just want to slide the end of the roll in there. Then pull the advanced lever. 
There you go. And normally you'd close the back at this point, but just to show more of the film being pulled. Yeah, that's properly loaded. Then you close the back. And the F3, as well as some other Nikons, won't meter properly or fire at different shutter speeds until the frame counter reaches zero. So you can see I have it set at half a second here, and it'll still fire. Oh, no, I reached zero. <laughs> but yes, before the frame counter reaches zero, uh, the F3 and some other Nikon cameras will only fire at a single shutter speed. So you do lose maybe a shot or two at the beginning of the roll if you're trying to be film efficient. But yeah, that's how the system works on the F3. And once you've finished a roll in your Nikon F3, you're going to have to rewind it. So what you're going to do is take the camera upside down, press this button here, which releases tension in the body and allows you to rewind it. So then we flip out this rewind lever. You see there's an arrow and we just spin it along with that arrow. And you can hear and feel the film pulling back. And when it finishes, you'll hear it again. And you'll also feel it's a lot easier to turn once that happens. So now that it's done that, we can open the back of the camera again. And there's your film, ready to be processed. Normally, you'd rewind it all the way back into the canister. but I like to leave a little bit extra. So let's take a minute to look inside the viewfinder of the Nikon F3. OK, so looking through the viewfinder of the Nikon F3, we can see that there is a split prism in the middle. It's a horizontal split prism. So you're going to want to, when you turn the focus ring, those two images will move left and right. And when they're in line, that's what's in focus. So that's your focusing aid. Directly around that, there's a, a ring of micro prisms that sort of also go in and out of focus as you move the focus ring, and that's a sort of a, a secondary focusing aid. Um, moving up, in the center we have what's called a, a Judas window, which is a physical window through the, vi the viewfinder to the aperture ring of the lens. So that tells you what aperture is, is currently selected. Um, and then to the left of that, we have the LCD, which is the main metering component of the F3. Uh, on the right side, you'll see a, a shutter speed. Um, and then left of that, you'll see uh, the mode that you're in, um, which is M currently, uh, as well as a plus or minus uh, telling you if you're overexposed or underexposed. When you're properly exposed with the Nikon F3, it'll have a plus and a minus. So when you have both icons visible, that means that you're ready to take your picture. When we pop the camera into A mode, uh, you'll notice that the M goes away, as well as the plus and minus. That's because the camera is picking the shutter speed now instead of the photographer. So whatever shutter speed it says in that LCD is what the camera will pick. And that's uh, what will give you proper exposure given the current aperture value that you have as indicated by the Judas window. So that was the view through the viewfinder of the Nikon F3, uh, as well as a brief overview of its features, functions, and buttons. It's not too complicated of a camera but it is a professional camera designed to the highest standards, and it is um, quite customizable with interchangeable prisms, focusing screens, grips, winders, and a huge selection of Nikon lenses. So it is a camera that's ready for basically any environment and anything that you might throw at it. So a great camera for people of any skill level, especially high-ranking high amateurs and professionals. So thanks for watching. Let us know what you'd like us to cover next. And yeah, see you next time.